Hi, it's Loretta West with Color Garden Studio, and today we're going to play with my gel plate, and specifically this um, material called Duralar. I'm able to get it in the shot here, and um, the one I'm working today is 11 inches by 14 inches or 27.9 centimeters by 35.6 centimeters and it comes in different opacities this one is 0 0.005 two-sided matte film it's a polyester film for drawing drafting and mixed media and boy does it ever work I had purchased it for another project and um, then when I was working on my gel printing it just sort of popped into my view and I thought well can you print on that you should be able to print on that plastic is plus plastic and we know that this is a polymer and it's the paper is also a polymer so they should love each other and do they ever so this is um, something I've been working on it's been making these little components for outdoor temporary collages this week. Um, it started with Valentine's Day so I made some hearts and I also have turned them into wall hangings or sun catcher type things. So I've got one I'm looking at right now in my studio that I made and also I found out that they're great for collaging on paper so the um, Duralar is this portion here behind the mount, behind the bighorn sheep and it sticks no problem to paper um, and as you can see it's translucent so you can see in behind the little marks in behind which is from the paper in behind so it's got a lot of uh, possibilities and I'm hoping that you'll follow along today or watch the video and make it your own and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel please and if you care to make a donation that would be great to keep me in paint and out of trouble okay so I've got my gel plate five by seven jelly arts plate I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and clean it's got some friends on it and I have some paint and this is just paint I get locally at my dry good store crafting tape paint. I've got yellow, a teal, a bright dark pink, an orange, and a warm white. So that part is easy. I'm trying to keep it not too many colors. That's quite a few actually for this space but We'll make it work. I also have my brayer right here. Not clean, always used. So it'll be clean later. Don't you worry. I've got a catalyst mark making tool here. This looks like a little mini flick. Works really well. And um, some of the sequence stuff that I can't think of the name. I know the name of this stuff. I've got it. Oh dear. It's only under pressure that my mind sort of goes funny. Okay. So some of that stuff, which I know. I should know the name, but I forgot. You know, I'm over 60. Okay. It happens. So what I did is I divided the paper into four sheets utilizing my cutter. So they're practically almost the same size, just a little bit bigger than my gel plate, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to move things up a little so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, also for masks, I have got um, some leaves. Now what I do is I just buy the paper leaves or the fabric leaves at the dollar store that people use for scrapbooking and utilize those because right now things are rather frozen and there are no leaves for me to harvest um, but I do have leaves in the fridge I could go check on them and see if they're still good but I'm not gonna but that is something you can do in the fall is you can preserve your leaves um, so that you can use them during the winter all right 
let's start. What are we going to do first? Well, this is kind of a fading technique I'm going to show you. And um, I'm going to start with uh, orange, not the yellow. Yellow is hard for you to see. So a little bit of orange here do, 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 on my gel plate. Just a little, not too much, because it's not a very big gel plate. And uh, a little bit of yellow. I want to make sure that I retain the trans translucency of the paper. So here's one that I did that's quite dark. And so light won't really pass through that, but it's pretty it nonetheless. And here's one I did that is lighter, that's got some of the paint didn't stick, but it's got some nice transparency, which I like. All right, so we're just going to use my brayer, brayer this out. It's a little bit of paint, a little bit too much, so I'm just going to try to get it off. So I don't want too much paint here, where things get really kind of swimmy and slippery. So there we go. Looks about right. I want to be able to see the paper below. And um, I've got some of my leaves here, <clears throat> which I'm going to use. Maybe one down here. This way. Yeah, I'm going to do it upside down. Okay, I've got my Duralar. I'm just going to lay it down. Line it up to the edge as best I can and use my fingers to really press around the leaves. So the idea with this is I want some overlapping color, but I also want to have some transparency. So you can see here what's happened. So I've got transparency, and then I'll be overlapping with another color here and there. It'll be great. Okay, so I'm going to take off my leaves a little bit. Come back with my other. I've got another one I started here. Let me utilize it as my clean off sheet. Let's see where that goes. Just sort of clean it off here. And it didn't really pick much up, but that's all right. Okay, and then let's go with this pink. What's it called? Fuchsia. Fuchsia fun. Not just any kind of fuchsia. The fun kind. Okay, so I'm going to go right over that sort of spot right there. And I'm just going to spread out that paint. Actually, that's not enough. I need more. Okay. Oops. Stay there. Okay. A little better. All right. So what I've got is it's quite thick in the middle and then to the sides is ombre's out. Is ombre a verb? It sure is. Okay. And then we're going to do some. I want some that's going to be clear and then some that's going to overlap. So we're going to go right in here. And the neat thing is this, you know, you just keep adding layers and, until it feels right for you. This is your fun time. So that paint was a little dry and it made it kind of uh, stippled, a stipple effect. And you know what? I kind of like that. I'm going with that. That's cool. I kind of got this line right here. It's too dry now, but if that does happen to you, you can go in. Actually, let me try that. Hang on. And uh, I've got a wet nap here. 
and see if we can just sort of feather this edge a little bit because it was bugging me. It's too hard an edge. So I'm going in here and just feathering it a little bit with the baby wipe. And that's, I like that more. But this is up to you as well. When you're doing it, you get to have hard edges. Okay, so it should be dry pretty fast as well. So I've got this side over here. I'm going to go back to my orange a little bit. Start it over here. Oops. So you don't want it to have so much paint that it shows little striations or waves too much because it'll just be too thick on there. I want to be able to see to the bottom or through the gel plate to the bottom to the white. I've got a white sheet behind. Okay, I want to do some more leaves here. You know, I've got this little bird. I've got another bird here that's kind of mucked up, so I'm going to use it. Oh, okay, I'll use this one. So I'll use that as well. And go right over this. Let's see the other side. That's all right. We're going to line that up. Line that up. Line that up. in there with your fingers. There's nothing like feeling the tactile thing. There's a tactile thing of how gratifying that is when you're pushing this around. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I just demonstrated something I didn't realize. I actually meant to do it on this side. I did it on this side, but that goes to show you how translucent these are, and you can do both sides. You can put paint on both sides and make some cool marks. Okay, so let's try a little bit of the yellow. I'll put quite a bit on. So there's that's still wet on that side. This is dry. I think I'm going to do this one over here. There we go. Okay. Now I'm rubbing really hard on the part that I painted the wrong side and it's not coming off. It is stuck. Okay, so starting to get some nice, lovely silhouette effects of the leaves. Now let's go in with some of this turquoise. Is it? Uh, yep, just plain old turquoise. This one to make a little bit wider. This kind of ombre effect where it's specific, you're doing you know a specific part, you're not doing the whole paper. Um, it's very easy to do and it's easy also to do on paper. So you might want to practice on paper before 
using the uh, Duralar, which is more expensive, there's no doubt about it. Okay, so now that I've got my little tool here, I'm just going to do some mark making a little bit here and there. Let's see what happens. Go over with some of my leaf masks. Where do I want this? I think I want it right here. And I need to press on the whole paper. So, oops, there, yeah. ooh. See, now that we've added a little darker color with the blue, it actually looks kind of green now because it kind of mixed on the plate, but that's all right. Um, it is starting to get some really nice abstract shapes in here. So I'm just going to take my baby wipe and give my plate a little clean up because it's starting to pick up the yellow and I'd like some of that turquoise by itself. Thank you very much. You can also just use a uh, spritz water on there with a spray bottle and paper towel to get it clean. A little clean up. Whoops. Okay. So, I've got some really neat looking shapes in here. They're abstract. I love it. But I think I'm going to go over here and utilize this. Make sure my brayer is sort of clean. So green on there. Mm. Okay. Ooh, nice ombre effect here. Take this off a little bit. Okay. But you could use any kind of masking. Uh, item that you'd like to use. You don't have to use leaves. These are just handy and something that I have around. So but you could certainly cut your own masks out of, of the same material of this Duralar or Mylar or Upo paper. So how are we doing here? didn't pick it up quite as well, but it's a start. Let's see, okay. Let's get back to my pickup paper, which is over here. Let me notice that, but I haven't been using that very much, so that's probably why I got so much paint on there. Oh well, it's all fun and games. Okay, I picked it up a little better. Let us utilize some more of this blue. Or turquoise. Okay, it didn't really happen with the uh, catalyst tool did it. So we're going to make it a little more exciting. I like to clean it off after I use it. Okay. So whatever it is I'm going to use is going to be covered up so I don't want that. So I'm just going to do some of this some of that. And where to put it? Let's put it back over here again because I don't have a lot of paint right there. Put it in there. Press down. Well, you have to press down more than you would with paper because it's kind of bouncy. It likes to bounce back. You have to use quite a bit of pressure. 
can see there where I probably put too much paint on there, a little too juicy, but it still works. Okay. Clean this up, clean off my plate with this turquoise color. As you can see that's an option as well. And then we're going to do the turquoise over here. And as you could see before, with the um, with the alcohol, the paint comes right off. So if you really are unhappy with what you've done, you can just rub it off of the, of the Duralar. How cool is that? Okay, let's put some birds on here. And be a heart. I'm not worried about getting paint on this. I can rub it off later. what it looked like. So this is the same idea. Unless I think I love that surprise. You just don't know what you're going to get. But there we go. So on this one, we've got some color. We've got some interesting shapes, almost leaf shapes. There's a heart right there, which you can utilize. And it's quite abstract, but it's multi-layered. I'm just going to pick that up with this one. As best I can, so I'll go back to my... Baby wipe, give it a wipe. So right now it may not look like much, but once you cut them out, they are really quite fun. So you would cut them out. Here's I've got one that's cut out here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So the next part. So you let that dry. You know, it doesn't take very long. It's very quick. A few minutes. Enough to have a cup of coffee. And I'm going to put my jelly plate aside. I like to keep them in their clamshells. Keeps them nice and flat and happy. Okay, so this is one I have from previous. And you can see it's got the different layers of paint on it. And I have another one here too. This one actually might be better because this one's got more clear areas, a more negative space. But I like the color on this one, so I'm going to go with this one. Okay. And part two of this Duralar extravaganza. Um, you could use this, what I'm going to show you next, you could use a paintbrush, small paintbrush, and gold paint, gold acrylic paint on the edges, or um, possibly a jelly roll and but I think this is the best deal. So this is an 18 karat gold leafing pen by Krylon. It also comes in copper and silver I believe. Um, just shake it up. It's a little smelly so make sure you're in a well ventilated area to use it. And I'm just gonna activate it by pressing down on my paper. I'm just going to do my edges here. And that's going to cover up any kind of uh, line that I had drawn on there to cut it out. And to cut it, I just use these out as use small scissors because I find small scissors cut scissors, cut curves better. 
the large ones. So now I've got a blingy kind of edge. You can see that, but I do. And I can see on the back side it's kind of rough. I'm just going to go over it. This stuff dries really fast. And do the back side as well. Because I could see some dark lines in there that I didn't like. There we go. Okay. Put the uh, cap back on, very important. And then we're going to do a few, a little Zentangle action. Now you could also do it the other way. So you could make your print and then you could tangle over the whole thing or do some sort of marks with Posca or some sort of acrylic marker and, um, and then cut it up. That's another way to do it. But today, I've got this cut out, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Just some, I'm um, using a Posca pen. This is a light blue, which I find goes really well on the orange and the red. And it's a 0.7 nib. Give it a shake. And I'm going to make sure that the ink's coming out, or the paint's coming out. You can also use a reusable marker on that. So this is a generic one. I don't even know who makes this. Must have got it for free somewhere. But it's got, this one's got black fluid acrylic in it, golden acrylic, and, um, oh yeah, it is. But it works the same way. Okay. So I'm just going to start with a line right across. And then aura that line. And do the same below it. And things get rather, what's the word, kind of stuck. The nib kind of gets stuck in the paint. So you could also do the flip side, which is the smooth side in this case. But I like the painted side. And we're just going to just do a zigzag. So I'm just going to keep it really easy and simple. Want to find out more about Zentangle? I have a number of Zentangle free videos on this YouTube channel under Color Garden Studio. Whoops, not right out of shot there. So I'm just going to do an arch right there. Keep it really simple, really open. I don't want to do too much because I want to be able to see through this heart and I want to see the light coming through um, and the colors. We have some rays coming down. We're going up. So you get to choose your adventure as far as colors are concerned. I just found the darker the color, the more careful you had to be about keeping the white space, the negative space. But isn't that pretty? And you can see that. Kind of washed out there. But it is quite something. So you can utilize this. You can put a little hole in it with a punch and and uh, create a wall hanging or something to hang in your window like I've done with um, little prisms to catch the light or like I've been having fun with making temporary collages with them and little tableaus little stories in the snow Lots of fun. You can also put them on a card. I have a card. I have a card here. I'll show you what it's like on a white piece of paper. So this is um, 
the watercolor paper, but it'll work just fine. And get this out of the way. I'm going to show you what you could do. That way you could also put it on a white piece of paper and you have instant card. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you tuning in and I hope that you'll come back and watch more videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and donate to my channel if you care to. It would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Bye bye for now.